Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Things We Know. I'm Lisa Callahan. And I'm Carrie Morin. And today our topic is shit happens. <laughs> and we just spent about five minutes trying to decide exactly what that means. So I think the thing is, it does, right? Shit happens to all of us and we all handle it differently. And I'm going to share my belief around it here in a second. And it's my belief, right? Like, uh, shit is going to happen and, and I have no judgment necessarily on how anybody handles their shit. I've already said it like three times and we've been recording for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a not safe for work pod is all I'm going to say about that or for your children if you don't like cussing. Um, so here's my thought around it because we're, we're both going to share some of the shit that has happened to us in our mm -hmm. lives. Um, I... I come from a space and I fully presence the fact that I am neurotypical. I get anxious, I get depressed, but I do not have anxiety and I do not have depression. So I realize that this is the space I hold. I don't, but I've been around people like this. Uh, my grandma was like this in a big way. The idea of worrying about something that has yet to happen that may never happen. And so to me, that is you're suffering needlessly because if you worry about something and it happens, then you've suffered twice. But if you just allow that shit happens, then you only perhaps suffer once and maybe never at all, because the things you're worrying about may not happen. Mm. That's a lot of words, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I really, really, really try not to worry about things per se. It's not that I don't, but I catch myself and try to pull myself out of it. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things about us in this process is we, we do plan and we do like to be topical. And then we come in here and we go, you're making me think of something else. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you said that, it reminded me of some snippet I saw of Matthew McConaughey. And I don't remember even what it was. Was it an interview or something? But he said one of the wisest things he ever heard was a friend retelling his grandfather's like, you know, deathbed, you know, reflection, right? Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. it was a friend's. It could have been his own, but I, I, I don't, I think it was a friend's that it was like, there was a lot of Christ. I had a lot of crises in my life. Only a few of them actually happened or something like that. I, I'm butchering it, but it was no, something like right. there was, there was a lot. I, I, I've been through a lot of crises. A few of them, only a few happened, right? That's, so it's like good. the amount of time you spent worrying about stuff that really didn't end up happening. Yep was the point. So yeah. I agree, I agree with that. There is so much that's just going to happen that you don't see coming. Yeah. That it is worth really, you know, getting into a state of being that allows for the unexpected so that you have tools and you have ways to not just let that shit flatten you. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And worrying about it actually takes away from enjoying the present and being ready for the unexpected. So right. that's a lot of brain space when you're yeah. worrying. Yeah. And then I, I would say one of the reasons I really wanted to do this, because we kind of had this as a topic for later, is because it's so interesting. I mean, there, there's so many things that come up for me right now. And um, just being in the world of where people will, you know, kind of downplay the shit they're going through because it's not as bad as what someone else is going through. Mm. And, and we're always like, hey, it's relative. Your shit is your shit. And if you're yeah. going through it, you get to go through it however you want to go through it. Okay. So there's that. I have, as a lot of people know, a, um, you know, we, we live with a son with a disability, mostly related to a seizure disorder. And so there's a lot of unexpected stuff that's happened, a lot of unexpected shit. And we, we, you know, as, as any parents would do, as anyone with thankfully good insurance would do, you know, we do everything we can. And we got to a place where things were going really well. And at least when I started this pod and then right when all of this was, you know, dropping and happening and things were rolling in all of our lives, right. Things got really bad for him. He started having um, these horrible drop seizures again, and it, it does a lot to our family, right? It just pulls us right back in, and he can't be mobile anymore. He needs assistance. It it's heartbreaking. It re-traumatizes his siblings, you know, and us. That's shit, right? That's unexpected shit. That's not something you ever hope is going to happen, and you're never ready for it. And as Lisa and I talk about all the time, and we talked about this on the emotions, like I, you know, 
the whole world would give me a pass and be like, dude, that sucks. Go, go and take care of your family. And, and I'll say to people like Lisa, who, who also, you know, expect the best from me too, you know, I don't live there, but yeah, I, I, I definitely, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time, you know, at least a few times a week when we're going through it, just feeling sorry for us, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just feeling sad and being like, Ugh, or angry or whatever it is so I can move through it but I can't live there because it, that is not how I get through things. Like, so when shit happens for me, what's helpful is to have my sense of humor is to have my people and to have the things that feed me like work that I love, like projects that excite me. And I, I believe for everyone, including that son, but all my children, like, that is what, that is the rising tide for us, right. Mm, is some mm-hmm. normalcy. And there's life happening, right? So shit happens. My dog's barking right now. Um, but uh, so, so for us, right? It is people this week who know what's going on with me. Are like you, you dropped a podcast. How are you doing that with everything you guys have going on? And it's like, well, it's not happening twenty four seven for us. It is right. what's happening. It's not the only thing. So I think mm. it's like, don't let shit define us. You know, step back you have to deal with the shit. I'm saying it a bunch too now. And you, you get to like, not give it an oversized portion of your attention. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also it keeps you from being present, right? If you lament all the things that have happened and worry about all the things that could happen, you know, it's something I say a lot around the idea of, um, you know, it's a cliche on some level, but all we have is the present. The past is gone and the future doesn't exist. And, and so it's, it's, if, if you're constantly vacillating back and forth between, um, mm, not pity, but just, I don't know what the word is and worry, you know, again, past Mm -hmm. and the future, you're not being present in the moments. And and you've talked about this, like Crip's great. He's really very present and happy and, you know, um, is. and you, and you'd miss out on that moment with him. If you were only worried about what could happen or only lamenting what has happened. Right. And this is like, goes into our, that idea of like, shit happens. Don't let it define you. Yeah. It doesn't define his whole experience. And he is so much more than that. And we are so much more than that. And actually we are so much more because of it. Yeah. So there's, yeah. The, there's the other piece of it, right? Like, yep but I like to call a gift and shitty wrapping paper. Sometimes it you text me that a lot, <laughs> horrible things or just really inconvenient things or really sad things or disappointing things will happen. And you're a big believer and everything's happening for you. And, yep. and we don't often in the moment have the perspective to see how this is for us. It is often. And I will admit there are times when I, I've said this to you, I can see how it's making his siblings and his parents, better people. Mm. Why the fuck does he have to go through this? Like, I don't right. get that. Right. And so, and that's okay. I can have that feeling. I can be totally. like fist to the sky. And my older son will say like, he and I will kind of, um, Peter and I will kind of, you know, sort of trade off this perspective, but he'll say, oh, but to love, to be loved, to love Griffin and to be loved by Griffin is such an extraordinary gift. Hmm. He has, you know, he has so much, you know, love because of this experience in him and so much that he appreciates that he's gaining. And it, it, it is, it's this other extraordinary thing that we might've not had, had our life just chugged along with a bunch of, you know, neurotypical kids. Right. And mm-hmm. so this is, this has been fascinating because related related to the seizures and injuries has been brain injuries that have caused some learning issues. So we we are on a path that's still kind of unknown. And yet it's true. There are gifts in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we, when we were prepping for this, you know, your reflection, which makes sense. I mean, I, uh, many shitty things have happened to me in my life. And um but the most recent, of course, was my mom dying unexpectedly. And we referenced this on the origin pod. But um, for those of you who don't mm-hmm. know this story, my my mom, so my dad passed in 2019. He had uh, dementia. Luckily, he passed before it got to the point where he didn't recognize us. So that was a blessing. 
but that was the long goodbye. You know, he'd been, he'd been suffering from it for two years and it was to the point where, you know, you weren't really talking about anything of importance because he didn't understand it and blah, blah, blah. And so when my dad died, it was obviously sad, but it was expected, you know, and we had grieved him for two years, but then, and then the sex, the next part of it was we'd spent, we being my sister and I spent so much time focusing on my dad that I remember thinking, so he died in October. We had his life like memorial service um, or a celebration of life at Christmas of 2019. And so even that Christmas trip was just very focused on this for my dad, right? And and for the family and so forth. And I just remember thinking, you know, ugh, now my mom gets us a hundred percent because as long we've been gone from Ohio for over 25 years now. So every, we talked about this last mm-hmm. time, every, every trip was going between my dad and my mom and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I remember thinking so succinctly, like, ah, oh, my mom finally gets all of us. You know, when we come home, she, we don't have to, you know, we can just get to be together. And then that was, so that was uh, December 31st, 2020, 2019, sorry. And my mom died unexpectedly April 10th, 2020, um, 2020, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I think is actually right around when this pot is going to come out. It will be her third anniversary. And um I had talked to her that morning via text and she went out for a walk and I guess she collapsed and died. Uh, We Mm -hmm. don't really know what happened. Um, The cops just showed up at my sister's house. And that was a, uh, uh, Liam said, when I found out, I, he's like, I've never seen anything like that except in the movies. Cause I literally like screamed and crumpled to the floor. I, and and to the point where my where Darren said he almost laughed because it was so dramatic. But then when he realized what I had said that my mom had died, he remembers that happening. His dad died when he was in the sixth grade, and his mom had that same reaction. All of that again was expected. But anyways, mm. um, and mm. I was because of who I am and and the work I've done, learning going through coaching. Um, I was able to pretty quickly. I'm going to say, and I'm not lying. When I say within about 48 hours, hone in on the gift, which was, it was COVID. And had she survived, uh, she would have been high risk and she still wouldn't have been able to see us. And Amy and I wouldn't have been able to go to the hospital and we wouldn't have been able to take care of her because she would have been high risk in the beginning of COVID when nobody knew what the hell was going on. And so I just knew while I was incredibly sad and heartbroken and devastated, I could see the gift almost immediately. And I'm really grateful that I have that ability to be able to hold both things as true, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah. yeah, so that's that's my story and I'm sticking with it. But so, you know, if you listen to our origin story, you know that uh, I really got to know Lisa after that. And and I, I often think, I thank your mom for bringing us together Mm -hmm. and bringing us into your life and you into ours and all that too. And um, that gives me chills thinking about it because it's, I I see the same way. Like my dad has gone way before he should have Mm. and um, should have been as a lot of people are. And, um, and there was a lot of gifts in the timing and the way, uh, maybe not, I shouldn't say the timing, but the way, you know, we needed to come together for my mom at that time, Mm. you know, there's, um, there's, there's so many, there's so many things like it, it was just an unfair as, as so many like idiopathic random diseases are, it was such an unfair thing for him to have to go through. And yet he had so much gratitude through all that. And that was mm-hmm. such a gift, right? Like so much gratitude for his life and his faith and his love and his family and, and, and my mom, you know, and yeah. there was just so much about that. That was such a gift in the end but at the time, it just felt so hard. And it reminds me, and I think I said this already on the pod, but it reminds me of what my aunt reminded me this fall, knowing what we've been going through in the past, you know, four or five years, which is like that Buddhist idea that we suffer when we resist what is, Mm -hmm. is so powerful, right? Because yes, grief, (laughs) grieve and don't tell anyone to, you know, don't let anyone tell you to put an end date on grief. Grief will always just knock at your door when it needs to, and you get to feel it. And grief is not resisting it. Resisting is denial. And, Mm -hmm. and Lily trying to fight it and make it not be so it kind of goes back to what you started with, which is worrying about it, trying to prevent it. And like, you know, or, or just really like, you know, just fighting it that I get it. 
and I'll, I'll kind of love to you if, if you experience that and your, and your responses to fight it. And I'm here to tell you, and probably Lisa's too, with our, with our experiences anyway, that doesn't change it. It makes it worse. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I am learning, uh, you know, I, again, people are like, how do you, how are you doing it all? I'm like, I'm not sleeping as much as I should, um, partly. And, and that can't be helped, but that's temporary. So it's the mm -hmm. reminder that things are temporary. I have dear friends like Lisa and people who allow me to show up however I need to show up. And I, um, ask for help and I celebrate when I can. And here's the big thing. I laugh as much as possible. I mean, in some of the darkest <laughs> times in my family, we have laughed really hard. Other dark things have happened that there's no laughter for, but those were things more that, you know, something that Miles went through last year, which I don't want to get into. It's so, so dark. It's something he, you know, he witnessed and had to be part of, but we, we, um, we don't like, we use humor whenever we can. When Griffin was in the ICU and he got so sick of being asked on a scale of one to 10, you know, what is your pain level? Brendan went home because, you know, he, he was just feeling helpless. Only parents could come in. His brothers couldn't see him and only one parent at a time. So he went home and took hilarious pictures of our dogs for every stage of like a one to two is like, this, you know, and then like the 10 is like this. Have you ever seen the smiley face? I have, like, which is I, a whole nother episode of he uh, took some, if I can find them, I will paste it on the page. It is awesome. the freaking funniest thing he did with our dogs. And it just like busted us all up, including Griffin who gave us a smirk, you know, when he was in, in a recovery state, because that that's, you know, that's kind of what reminds us we're human and that yeah. there is light coming. I mean, gallows humor is, is humor oh, yeah. for a reason. I, I love gallows humor. It's my oh, favorite. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big connecting point for you and I. <laughs> it really, really is. No, yeah. so we've gone through some shit. <laughs> we have, we have. I, you know, the other thing that makes me think of, this is so random, but I remember when we were in Chicago, we had, we, uh, we had a car you know, that was relatively old, so it was out of warranty. So we went to uh, this really great Ashland Auto and Tire and the Chicago people listening, these amazing uh car place and I remember going in at one time and talking to the guy and and he said you know you should always have a shit happens bank account that you mm. just put money in on a regular basis so that when something that's financially needs to be taken care of I mean he was clearly talking about cars but you have the money and I just I will ne I just never forget about it anytime I hear the word shit that's happens I think of the shit happens fund Oh, such a good idea. Nobody right. thinks when they have kids, mm -hmm. nobody thinks about saving for some of the things that we've had to pay for out of right. insurance and out of pocket. It's so true. Such a, that's such good. I wish things I wish I knew then. Right. Yes. Oh my God. The gosh. other thing that jumps out at me and you didn't say you, uh, you didn't say this, but I think about this all the time because we have had this conversation when somebody is going through shit, managing it and, and being productive, especially a woman. Mm -hmm. I thought we don't tell them they're a super person, a super woman. Oh my gosh. How many times I have I said that? Like if I had a uh -huh. job for people like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, right. What is the alternative? I'm right. Like, totally. Yes. I mean, oh yeah. And I, I, and I'm not your inspiration porn. That's the, my favorite <laughs> one. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how you do it. Like I do it. Cause it's like what, what you would do it. Yeah. Right. I mean, what would you do? Quit. Right. I mean, yeah. And yeah. and I get, I get that comes from a really loving. It place. does. It does. But it does. like it's, it's, it's the comp with salt again <laughs> in some ways. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so we, we kind of just gleaned a few things that are important to remember again, from our experiences, it's not everything, but I, I think we were going to share some of those too. Yeah. Right? All right. you know, this first one, it's it, you've touched a couple of these, but I'm going to say this one again, mm -hmm. because we also talked about this in the uh, feel your feelings, which is mm -hmm. it's not permanent. Everything is temporary. And it's true. I mean, you know, again, to go to the grief piece of it, as you said, grief knocks on your door when you least expect it. But even that deep, deep sorrow, it will dissipate to some extent. You know, whatever you're going through, that moment of, you know, whether the cars broke down and you don't have the money, whether you didn't get into the college you wanted, whether you didn't get the job you wanted, have those feelings, but sit in that space of everything is temporary. You can 100% have a pity party, party, totally normal reaction. But if you swim in it, which neither mm -hmm. one of us do, it that that's the thing that that will it just it continue to permanent. suffer. It does it become, become permanent. It becomes permanent. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. And it becomes the thing, the next thing I was going to say, it becomes your identity, right? You are not what you're experiencing. And I think that that's a really important thing to remember that we as coaches learned, right? I don't know if I really realized that before that, because I'm kind of an emotional being, but, uh, well, we all are, but I, I think I live there a lot is don't identify with what you're experiencing. You know, it is really important for me to remember I am Carrie. I am a lot of things. I am not this tragedy or I am not mm. this, this huge bummer. I am not this setback. I am Carrie and I am experiencing something kind of shitty, right? Right. Because my life is not shitty. It, it never has been. It's an interesting thing. I think about it a lot. Like I don't want to be, you know, seen all the time with those sad. <laughs> Uh, if, like my friend Kim and I will set each other these faces when you're in the hospital, like the faces people give you when you're going through. Yeah. Something. Yeah. And you're like, I don't, I don't necessarily want pity. I really appreciate the sympathy though. And the, and the empathy, um, you know, and I am not all that. Like I want people to know that we, we are caregivers, but I don't want people to see that just as who we are. Right. And then right. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, what matters is how I feel. It is my, like, I am experiencing something hard and it, it will, it will be over. It's temporary. And I get to choose how much of this experience I'm going to sink my teeth into, but it is an experience. It isn't me. Yeah. And again, we, I, I want to say it again, cause it feels mm-hmm. important to talk about the fact that if you have anxiety, mm-hmm. if you have an anxiety disorder, if you have depression, like this is going to land differently. You are, you may feel like you are what you're experiencing. Yeah. That's okay. So don't judge how right. you cope, right? right? This is, we're, we're sharing, hopefully our, we not hopefully, we are sharing our perspective. Maybe this will land for you. And if it does it, it doesn't make okay. you less than. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that, that you can't control. And right. I mean, without some help and without some resources that, I mean, there are a lot of wonderful tools out there and I'm sure you're using them all. And sometimes that just happens. And there's a whole other thing about how anxiety also keeps us safe and can be helpful sometimes. So, so totally. I don't want to, I don't want to say that that there's no place for it. Sure. I, I think when you, when you say, don't judge how you cope, I also think it's really important never to compare, never yes. ever minimize your shit storm compared to someone else's, you know, it is yours. That, I mean, that, I know, I assume you ran into this as a coach. I certainly ran into this during COVID when I, I talked to a client and they, you know, they'd be going through something and they'd be like, but I never got COVID or blah, blah, blah. Cause I mean, also to add mm-hmm. insult to injury after my mom passed and we went home for the funeral, um, on the way home, my husband ended up contracting COVID and he got it really early and he had it for about a month and it, it was, was brutal. Rough. It was brutal. He's never pre ended vaccination. Up, it was pre vaccination. It was pre pretty much, it was pre masks. So yeah. that was part of the problem that people weren't wearing masks, weren't protect he wasn't good at wearing a mask um and it was brutal and so uh, yeah I came home from you know burying my mom and literally laying on the couch on and I'm not a prayer but literally saying god yeah I cannot you Darren can't die now like I cannot do this and and he never went to the hospital and all that jazz but it was bad and so I'd have people say well I didn't I'm not going what you guys went through doesn't matter your mm-hmm. life is your life. Your reality is your reality. J- yes, maybe other people have a quote unquote worse, but what you're going through is valid. And that is your experience and do not dismiss it because you think other people have it worse. Right. And also think about how you're disrespecting those people by making their shit make you feel better. <laughs> I've, I've, I've experienced that too. <laughs> like, why am I doing that? Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone yeah. has their shit and it's, it's big to yeah. you. And yeah. You don't judge it. And I, I definitely experienced that with friends who wouldn't tell me what they were going through because they felt like what you're going through is so much harder. I'm like, okay, first of all, we're all going through some my my group of friends um that you know I, I've had since my my oldest was in kindergarten, like through the school they went to. We at some point during the whole, you know, COVID really couldn't go in someone's house, met outside for someone's 50th, and we just without planning it went around the table like what's your shit store? What's your shit store? And it made us all sort of feel better because we could all just be in person and we couldn't hug, but be in person and give each other the face and be like, oh man. Like we and were you're all, not alone. We all had our own version of that. And, it, and that you're not alone, that everyone's struggling and everyone has their struggles and people aren't wearing signs. And it mm-hmm. just reminds you to just be really gentle with yourself and each other. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you don't yeah. know what somebody's going through. Yeah, exactly. good point. Yeah, um, having resources, right? I mean, and it could be, it could be actual, you know, it could be therapy, it could be a coach, it could be acupuncture, it could be, you know, uh, church, spirituality, whatever. But if you need something, ask. I, I again, this was something mm. my mom. <laughs> My mom was so against asking for help. And I'd say, mom, people love to help. Like I know when somebody asks me for support, like it's, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're going through something and, and the reverse of that is if you're the person who's the helper, don't say, let me know what you need, because typically the person's not going to ask. So if you see opportunities to be of service to your friends as they're going through something, just pick up the mantle and do it. Yeah. Right. Know, right? Yeah, there isn't always something to do. Sometimes right. it's something to be with, but, but that is just such saying, a I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. You're going through it. I didn't do yeah. anything wrong, but I'm sorry. You're going through it. Yeah. Um, that's a little riff back on our previous, <laughs> right. previous Throw one. back to the previous I, pod. I really appreciate you saying that because when, um, before Griffin turned two, he, he actually didn't walk. Like he, he, he didn't walk till he was just about two years old. I broke my ankle in three places, had to have a pretty hmm. major surgery, two plates, 12 screws. Oh my God. It was lovely. Yeah. It was before we even had miles. Um, and I, up until that point, you know, was managing life, being able to, you know, do that, be that person who could like sign up and, and take care of other people and help people. Mm. And, you know, I was, I was meal trains and such. Yeah, I could do all that. And that really taught me a lot about not only was I not someone who was like, who like felt okay asking for help, but, because, but I had to, so I had to learn how to, it is really important in reciprocal relationships to allow people to give and not just receive. Like yes. it was such, like you said, it was such a gift and it really, it, and, and people probably, I, I get a little sick of our drama a, a little bit like, Oh, you guys are probably so, so sick of, I, I assume people are sick of hearing about what's going on with Griffin. So I don't really want people to help us. Cause I feel like, Oh, we've already gotten the bulk. Like they should help someone else now. So I'm guilty of that. I am guilty. You of did it to me yesterday. Not asking for help. Right. Are, you right. You texted me. You this. said, you're probably sick of hearing this. I'm like, I'm not sick of hearing it. I'm sick of it happening for you. Right. Right. Like that's right. true, but I'm not sick of hearing about it. So I am guilty of that. Cause you're right. There are times when it just asking for help. People are like, thanks. I would love to help you. Thank you for yes. asking. Yeah. I think Beth is so Beth is so great at that. She's like, thank you for asking. I can't, but thank you for asking. Or I can, yeah. I'll be here. Just tell me when. Right. And um, and so it is really, it, it is, it is such a gift to the people who love you to actually give them something to do. Yes. Yeah. I love this. Creativity is a must. Tell me more about that one. I I think because so and again, back to this example that I came in with, which is people are like, how are you doing a podcast? I was like, I work from home. I don't have to leave my home to do it. You know, yes, we're in the middle of a shit storm half the time lately. And this is something I can do. I'm really blessed that I have the kind of work that allows me to work from home and be flexible because three times this week, Griffin School has called and said, he's had a seizure. You need to come get him. And I work and live, you know, and operate in a way that, that allows me some flexibility but I had to get creative, right? I had to like, look at it that way and not just be like, well, I can't work. I can't work. <laughs> or we can't do it. Like, I, I really could have given into that and it would have looked true and felt true and been justified. Right. And I said to Lisa, like, I don't want anything going on with any of us, not just Griffin, any of us to be an excuse. I want it to be my reason. I figure it out because then it mm. becomes, you know, the gift. Right. Yeah. And so I think getting creative, right. Working from home is my, is my example, but in, in a lot of, you know, in a lot of um, shady situations, when I look at like what happened and we, when you look at any tragedy that happens and how people came together to take care of each other after like horrible fires or horrible, you know, earthquakes or anything like that, you'll see some of the most in, like inspiring creativity, creative responses to tragedies. And that goes way beyond any example I just gave of myself. Right. And, um, and, and I'm inspired by that. I'm not saying you don't get to lay down for as long as you want to. I'm saying to get out of it, sometimes you got to get creative and it goes back up to ask for help. Your friends will help yeah. you be creative. Yeah. I, and then I, I love this. Don't be a attached to the outcome. I mean, this is a, yeah. this is a, 
uh, an oldie but a goodie as far as us as coaches are concerned. But it is that idea of like, you can have the perfectly laid plan. And what's the the adage, mm-hmm. make a plan and God laughs. I mean, that's the thing. So big plan, you know, like we, mm-hmm. we were talking earlier, like I live in LA, mm-hmm. there are earthquakes, you know, and mm-hmm. we have, we have stuff for that. Yeah. And we don't know when it's going to happen. So we can't, A, we can't worry about it, but we have to, we have to just kind of also go with the flow in those moments, like have, have the resources, have everything set to the best of your ability. And you can't be attached to any particular outcome because then you might not be creative, right? We've talked about this before too, the idea of when you get really attached to an outcome, you lose the ability to be creative. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's being able to have a plan and hold it loosely. I have a really quick, good example of that. My first child so my husband is uh, OB, GYN. Well, he's an OB. He, he's an OB hospitalist now. And he works with a lot of midwives and they all agree that the, the this thing that they just dread is the um, laminated the birth, birth plan. plan. <laughs> the, the birth plan that's laminated. Right? That is because, taking it to a new level. Oh, it, there's so many great examples. Um, Brendan's former partner, Julie, is so funny. She, she created one because Brendan um, delivered her second child and you know their partners I guess that was convenient but it was so freaking funny down to like the music she wanted play you know with with her husband dressed as a certain like heartthrob and like they, they she just made it kind of a, she made a whole spoof on it because they've experienced that uh, you know right. nurse, nurses will tell you about this I you know um I have that curse of being married to someone in the business so my first child obviously like it, it did not go the way it was planned right so being an unattached outcome is really important because I still had that baby and right. like everything that could go wrong did go wrong right oh, no. and so when you can be unattached to like when you can like obviously plan for it be relentless like make some put some things in and be and know that you might not get there the way you think you're going to get there right or right. like it, like the way you want it to go might not go that way but be open to it which goes into expectations kills joy but you know um I think that that's, that's a great example of it because some shit will happen. And if you're really attached to the way it goes, you know, that could really level you at a time where you need to really be digging in. You have down, uh, I'm, cause we're looking at notes, uh, be relentless. Tell me about this one. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know if I understand this one. I heard, um, uh, I don't know if you know her, but you know, in our coach training, someone I came through with who I just admire the hell out of, um, Vanessa Brewers. I heard her say this recently. It's just, there's two different ways to say, I don't know how, right? Mm. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. It's very different. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. Which is that second one. Doesn't that sound just like you? (laughs) Yes. It does. That is totally you. Like yeah, that that <laughs> that statement is like your could be your slogan. I don't know how it's gonna, but it's gonna happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So being relentless is the is the way you say that, right? It's yes. the, believe in it, even if you don't know the how, which kind of goes into the other thing, right? Like believe in it and be unattached to how it goes. And, and gotcha. that's how you get to that. And again, maybe being unattached outcome is a little tricky there, but but you know what I mean, because you are gonna have a baby whether you <laughs> right. In, in most cases. So it's yeah. just, it's a, it's it, anyway, I, I think that it's remembering that like the enemy of great isn't bad. And if it gets you where you need to go, really don't be too hard on your, on yourself in, in terms of the how, I think yeah. that's how relentless and being unattached kind of goes for both of these. Yeah. And then the final one is surround yourself with good people and know their assets, which probably harkens back a little bit to ask for help. You know, there are, there are some people that can, in, in a moment of crisis, all they can offer is I'm so sorry that you're going through this and that's fine. And there's some people that can organize meal trains and there are some people who can sit and just be witness and not say a damn word, you Mm -hmm. know? And, and so knowing what each person's capability is and, and just allowing that to be is right. I got to give a shout out to our friend, Elijah. She will say to me so many times, I, I, I don't know what to say sometimes when these things happen. So I Google what to say to a friend going through a shitty time. And I was Aww. like, that right there was the best. So ever. Sweet. And, and because, because she cares so much and, yeah. 
And like you have said so many times, like, God, that's shitty. Cause no one wants any young person to be going through it. What happens to Griffin sometimes or, or, or what happens to a lot of young people. Right. And yeah. we just don't want that. And you're right. Like just know what you need and who to get it from and don't judge anyone for any of it. Right. Every, like some of it's situational. Some people don't have the capacity in the moment. Some people don't have the capacity. Right. And they still love you. Let yeah. them love you. Yeah. Um, and so know who your ride or dies are without, mm -hmm. you know, without judging anyone and, and really, you know, be a, just, just know who yeah. and what, and that's really going to help you. And, and, and then it invites you because really people will say, what do you need? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Do I need help? Do I need solutions? Do I need advice? Do I just want someone to let me bitch? Do I want someone to sit in the dark? Do I want yeah. someone to go to Trader Joe's for me all the time? Um, Side note. Anyone that's listening like, that anyone's lives by Joe's, <laughs> I'm sure I have something for you to get me. Um, but you know, there's, <laughs> it's, it, it, I think that that's, that's, that's huge. And, and in, in your case, right? Like you didn't ask and we were just like, wine, let's enter wine. <laughs> and, and thus we have the pod. Yeah. I mean, there, right. There's like go of the outcome. Like who knew that you putting together a, a 12 pack of wine was going to lead to a podcast. I know. Right. Oh, that's so good. See, that's so funny. <laughs> the gifts, the, the total gifts. I mean, I, you're right. I, and I told the four of you this before. Um, we are going, you know, I absolutely think that that was mom's final gift was you mm. four, you know, mm. uh, all the coaches that said the wine for sure, but the, the relationship that the four of us had, and we're going to be doing an interview with Elijah and Melissa very soon. So you get to see Yay. all four of us or hear all four of us very soon. Um, yeah. yeah. So I think bottom line shit happens, shit happens. right? And so, you know, I think we started out this pod saying we're going to have plenty of 80s musical references. And the reality of it is it's just going to be musical references where we can hearken to the 80s. That's definitely our favorite decade. Um, but, but we love all music. But we do. We really do love all music. So today's musical reference um, is from Miley Cyrus, who, you know what, I got to say, I kind of love her. Talk about a woman that is empowered. I mean, I could spend a whole episode talking about flowers, but I won't. And how she's sorry, not sorry. <laughs> she is a hundred percent sorry not sorry yay um but today we're going to reference the climb so here's the lyrics always going to be an uphill battle sometimes i'm going to have to lose the struggles i'm facing the chances i'm taking sometimes might knock me down no i'm not breaking and you have a little uh i have an honorable mention yeah an honorable yeah. mention <laughs> um modest mouse yeah. float on even if things get heavy we will all float on okay Mm, that actually gives me chills the way you said it that like kind of gave me like full body chills I love that I love it yeah too. so um I think that's all we have to say about shit happening I didn't think this was going to be my favorite topic but it feels so juicy I love it thank you yeah yeah oh thank you you're the one that came up with this one it was spot on so uh, I guess that's the things we know for this week and thank you so much as always for listening you want to give the caveats as always Carrie yes please please join the conversation tell us about the shit happening with you <laughs> and how you like to respond to it or whatever else you want us to know please join us in the conversation on our facebook page the things we know podcast and our instagram the things we know pod and on our youtube channel where you can see the funny expressions and gestures we make um <laughs> in an unedited version the things we know podcast as well and um and as always we'd love to hear from you so join our conversation in any of those places and we will see you next time thank you for listening Thank you. So long. Bye. Bye.